Well, Philip DeFranco, I accept your apology. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. So this is just a little bit of a follow-up on my video from yesterday. So there's a couple things I wanna talk about. First of all, I really appreciated the feedback from a lot of you from that video from yesterday. And you know, there's clear in some places people kind of misunderstood where I was coming from. I clearly didn't give enough background on the original Philip DeFranco video or even, you know, uh, information on, you know, where like, you know, the Jake uh, Tapper criticisms that were coming from. And it turned out actually it was the leadership of the Women's March, the folks who actually organized the, the Women's March that Jake Tapper was originally um, responding to. So I, I, I realized I didn't give a lot of information because I was really just um, trying to talk about a kind of a mode of responding to the Black Power Movement. And <laughs> just in general, the way the, you know, the people talk about the Black Power Movement and the way the Black Power Movement gets very, very quickly associated with, with terrorist groups and in ways that um, historically have been, uh, I don't wanna say unfair, but historically have been um, out of proportion with the work that's being done by the leadership in those movements and the violence that those movements are often met with. Um, but I also wanna, first of all, before I jump into everything, I wanna mention, okay, uh, Foot Soldier, thank you so much for uh, checking out the video that I made about you and for finally responding to it. And yes, you know, all love. And of course, yes, we, you know, you know, all mutual admiration and all those things. But I do wanna, um, I did kind of give some shade to Foot Soldier for not having responded to the video that I, you know, made you know, specifically about him. And, you know, yes, he did ultimately respond and I'm really, really grateful for that. Also, some bad news. Jack is at the vet, Jack's in the hospital. He's been very, very sick, like, like Death Watch kind of sick. Um, like, and I, and I mean that with no irony whatsoever. I was really, really uh, nervous about things. In fact, a couple of times I walked in and he was so, listless that I actually thought I had been walking in on, you know, poor Jack's corpse. He's doing better right now. He's at the vet. They're keeping him under observation. And my hope is that I'll be able to give you guys an update. So yeah, so that's the story about Jack. Generally, some of the responses that I got from people, like one that um, particularly um, touched me was someone was um, a little put off by my comparison the comparison that I made between the Black Liberation Army and Black Liberation Movements in general and ISIS. And I don't know if you recall, but I said specifically in the video yesterday that I didn't wanna to talk too much about ISIS because I don't know about it. But what I was actually pointing out was it was Philip DeFranco who was comparing the Black Liberation Army to not just the Black Liberation Army, but uh, Asada Shakur specifically to ISIS and to the Ku Klux Klan. And I think that that is very, very dangerous. And I also think in some ways that it's disrespectful to the, to the victims of violence in those movements to compare apples and oranges in that way, especially when, you know, generally non-violent movements are being compared to terrorist organizations or groups that have been organized specifically to commit acts of violence like the Ku Klux Klan, like ISIS. So I don't want to uh, come off at all as if I am condoning the actions of those groups at all. I don't want to come off as if I am somehow justifying. Somebody said that I was, you know, justifying murder, and that was not the point of the video at all. People, if you were watching, if people were watching and listening carefully, what I was saying is one should not accept the version of history that Philip DeFranco was sharing in his video. So here's where I get to the apology from Philip DeFranco. Philip DeFranco's video from yesterday, which came out shortly after I had posted my video about him and his video from the day before, he posted a video where he, you know, there was a, a police officer who was caught on tape planting evidence. 
there was a police officer who was caught on tape planting evidence. So here we are in 2017 with police officers still planting evidence in order to convict certain members of segments of the population of crimes of which they are not guilty or of which they may be guilty, but in the case of this particular individual, they were not guilty of what they were being charged with. So um, Philip DeFranco himself posted a video giving evidence, giving the, the kind of evidence that one could use in an argument to say that it, you know, we shouldn't make assumptions about um, you know, testimony given by police officers in their own cases. Not every police officer is guilty of, of falsifying evidence. Not every police officer is guilty of lying. Not every police officer is on the take. Not every police officer is found with guns that they are transporting for sale uh, to be used in crimes in urban communities. Not every police officer is guilty of murdering an innocent civilian. But it happens. And it happens often enough that it is not, it is not outrageous for us to be suspicious about evidence that has been given by the police, especially in the climate that I described in my video yesterday where very, very often there were organized programs of the government, of the CIA, of the police to frame groups who were engaged in black liberation. And if you, you know, check history, if you, you know, go through history, there were many individuals, white, black, uh, of many different phenotypes who have been casualties uh, in the movement for civil rights, in the movement for what has been called black liberation. So another thing that I want to point out is that when we look at the history of struggles in the world, okay, first of all, we wouldn't have a United States unless there had been an armed struggle for our liberty, right? And so you may or may not be someone who um, appreciates, you know, that um, the violence that was done, you know, had indeed had victims, had victims that were considered, you know, part of the other side, but also had victims who were, you know, you know, you know, fighting for us, right? But we, you know, have to understand that we live in a world where often the way to overcome oppression historically has been through violence. Again, we wouldn't have a United States of America. And if you go to pretty much any, you know, national park, any, you know, municipal building, there's either the name of or a statue of someone in a military uniform or someone who engaged in that violence that was used to help us establish the society that we have today. And so there is in some ways a logical inconsistence. There is a logical inconsistence for people who want to criticize um, some groups for their either vi violent rhetoric or some of the violent tactics of any kind, of any kind. Um, this is not to uh, compare uh, the American revolutionaries to groups like ISIS, to groups like the KKK, but to, to uh, condemn all forms of violence uh, is a bit naive in a world where often the liberties that we enjoy in our modern times is because of the violence that was perpetrated by individuals on our behalf in the past. If you look at the history of struggles in America, um, you can find all kinds of leaders who have used all kinds of methods to achieve goals that now we consider, you know, noble goals. Um, in the case of the leadership in civil rights and black liberation, you will note that most of those individuals have FBI files. Most of those in individuals have been labeled enemies of the state. And so for uh, Philip DeFranco, again, to use the, f the fact of uh, Asada Shakur's um, inclusion on the FBI's 
10 most wanted terrorists list. Um, to, inc to uh, you know, use that as evidence against that individual when you could, you could, you, we'd be, we'd likely be saying the same thing about Malcolm X if Malcolm X had left the country and, and was living in Cuba or was living somewhere else in exile. Um, or uh, if, if someone else was an expatriate of the country living somewhere else, right? So let's hold your, slow to slow your roll. Slow your roll a little bit, Philip, before you start categorizing people based on the way they have been categorized and or labeled by the establishment. Because, you know, we could be saying the same thing about Martin Luther King. We could be saying the same thing about Medgar Evers. And if our society was at all balanced, we'd be saying the same thing about, you know, me members of the Weather Underground, who were, you know, by the same definition as someone like Asada Shakur, by the same definition, were terrorists. They blew things up. They blew things up and were responsible for some deaths. But, um, you know, you don't see members of the Weather Underground being labeled terrorists today. In fact, you see um, at least one member of the Weather Underground is doing the college tour circuit and, ha circuit and has a book. So um, let's, you know, let's try to practice what, you know, I've, you know, I'm, I'm very, very, very um, into this idea that um, was presented by Athene Wins of logical consistency. If A is bad and B equals A, then B is bad. But that's not the way things uh, seem to work out in, in our society. That's not the, the way we see things being played out. So I just want to offer that to everyone to take a deep breath, take a step back, think about what I'm presenting for you as a problem to be considered. I just want to be clear that it's not about, my video yesterday wasn't about whether or not, and the fact that people took it this way, I'm very suspicious of people who took it this way. But my video yesterday was not at all about whether or not the KKK or the BLA or the, uh, the, or ISIS are justified in the violence that they use. Not at all. Uh, in fact, I stated very clearly that, you know, the, that these violent methods I, you know, was opposed to for some specific reasons. But in general, I've, you know, m most of my videos talk about my, my position on violence, which is shifting, I must say, but not that radically. But um, that there are some violence when coming from certain directions, from certain places, is seen as terrorism, whereas, you know, violence coming from others, it has, is given, is done with some authority. You know, the violence of the state is not considered violence. It's considered the administration of justice or something else, right? And so that's, that said, um, I just want you all to give that some thought and to consider, you know, you know, really what that means and what that says about us in terms of our biases. What it says about us in terms of our biases. <sighs> So that's a lot. Anyway, so it's a scorcher here in Detroit today, so I'm gonna spend the rest of the day just trying to stay cool. Later I'm gonna go pick up Jack from the vet and we'll see how all that goes. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. And this is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big guns again.